The wildfires have created worry among Texans here at home. We are in a drought and nearing 40 days without rain. So what happens when wildfires burn through our state? Joining me this morning is Navy SEAL veteran Tim Sheehy, CEO and founder of Bridger Aerospace. Tim, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate your time. Morning. Thanks for having me. Talk us talk us through the type of training these pilots have to go through when battling wildfires such as this. The process is long and complicated. Most of these pilots uh, in our industry come from either the bush background flying in Alaska and Canada or military background where they have close air support uh, experience. So our team's comprised about half and half from both those areas. And they have to start learning, of course, basic aviation skills, and we don't hire fresh pilots. Our pilots already are experienced before they join our teams. Tell they have to know how to do instrument approaches. They have to be commercial pilots. Where they start with us is mountain flying, fire flying. They have to learn how to read a fire from the air and coordinate with all the other aircraft over that fire. And they have to understand, of course, amphibious aviation. Our aircraft are flying boats. They come in, they scoop the water, they take off and go drop it on the fire. So it's a combination of a lot of very specific skills. And, of course, they all have to be conducted very precisely because it's a dangerous mission. Yeah, all very fascinating. You know, you talk about experiencing playing a big role here. I now want to talk about the super scooper. You know, you mentioned this this aircraft going down and, and, and scooping up water. What happens if there's no nearby lake to scoop water from? Well, about 96% of fires within the United States uh, are within a tactical scooping distance of a body of water. That can be a river, reservoir, lake, oceans, uh, or bays. So very few fires uh, are burning in a spot where there is no scoopable body of water. And in that case, they simply won't send our type of aircraft. There are a lot of other different firefighting aircraft like retardant-based tankers and helicopters with bucket ships. And those type of aircraft would be used in the scenarios where we're out of a tactical scooping distance. Tim, what's the communication like between ground firefighters and, of course, pilots? Well, that's the most important part of this whole thing, and that was my background as a Navy SEAL on the ground in Afghanistan and Iraq. I was working with aircraft overhead and understood the criticality of that link between ground and air and ensuring that link is not just effective, but it's also happening in a very, very quick period of time. So these pilots have to not only be able to fly the plane safely, they have to be able to read the situation on the ground and then communicate that with directly with the incident commander on the ground. And also there's an aircraft overhead called the air attack. That's the coordination aircraft. And that aircraft is coordinating all the other aircraft over the fire and the ground teams to ensure that we're not dropping water retardant on the ground teams and those ground teams are getting the support from us that they need. So communication is the name of the game uh, in aerial wildfire mitigation and that's one of the hardest skills to develop in our air crews. And I would argue it's the, one of the hardest skills to develop in all industries. Tim, thank you so much for your time this morning. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me.